The last story of mobile transformation. I mentioned yesterday that there's a transformation story in healthcare that I want you to hear. This is actually, I just, hearing your stories are, is probably the favorite part of my job. And in all honesty, if I'm going to stack up all the stories, I don't have a favorite customer. I don't. But this is one of my favorite stories for the year. I'm just overwhelmed by it. It started shortly after JNUC last year. I just made an announcement at an all-company meeting that I, I just had a feeling something stern in me. And I saw some apps out there that I felt that iPads could change lives for patients in hospitals. And I just asked all Jamf personnel to scour the earth for a hospital that was deploying tablets or iPads to patients and what they would be doing with that. And it was a few months later that one of our support personnel, uh, Nate Carlson, uh, ran up to me and he said, I just had a support call from a Mac administrator, and he made mention that they're actually deploying uh, tablets to patients. And I said, tell him I want to come on site, I want to talk to him right away. And I went back to my office and I got a call from Nate a little while later. And he said, uh, two things. One, he's freaking out a little bit, and two, <laughs> He has one question, do you drink beer? And I said, tell him I will be there next week. And I traveled on site the following week, and the rest is history in terms of what they've done, and it's amazing. I would like to invite to the stage now from the University of California, San Diego Health Services, Mark Silvestrak and Eric Boyd. And Mark, I worked hard on getting your name right. <laughs> Eric, thank you so much, appreciate it. Now, uh, I told just the beginning of Jamf's journey working with you. Uh, Mark, can you just give everybody a little bit of summary for, for how it is that you're sitting here today on this uh, journey of transforming the patient experience? Where, where did you start and, and how did you get to where we're at? Sure. Um, so I would say probably just over a year ago, we were presented with an opportunity to um, offer up tablets to our patients. Uh, what we're doing is we're... Um, giving them an application on a tablet that allows them access to their inpatient record. So this gives them access to their lab results, gives them access to the medication they're taking, who's taking care of them, what their schedule looks like, and that sort of thing. So it seems simple enough, sure, give them a tablet. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not that simple. Uh, we certainly have HIPAA compliancy that we have to deal with. Uh, we have some other things from a privacy standpoint that we have to deal with. So what we started with was a less expensive device and uh, we would give this to the patients. And the process requires us to provision this tablet specifically to that patient. The patient gets the tablet, they use the tablet, and that's fine. Also, coming from the experience side, we wanted to make sure we weren't uh, taking anything away from the patient. We wanted to give them a tablet and also give them access to some other apps and, and the camera and some other things on the tablet. So that's all well and good. Uh, patient leaves, well, we now have to prepare this tablet for the next patient. And this required a phone call to the help desk, help desk notifying device support, device support actually coming up and cleaning that device. It, it gets cleaned from a bacterial perspective by the nursing staff, but the, <laughs> the device support team has to actually clean the, the device. Because there can't be a, a, a bit Cannot of data that goes from data. one patient to the next patient. We can't risk any leakage of data anywhere, right. obviously. So that's fine, and that's okay in a pilot case. You know, when you have a couple of patients, we would ask the patient if they wanted the tablet. We didn't require them to have a tablet, obviously, in the room. We would ask them, do you want a tablet? This is going to give you some access to your care team and a few other things. And so a lot of the patients took advantage of that. So that's okay. That works. But it wasn't something in the long run that was going to be sustainable. It wasn't something that we could really operationalize um, in a large-scale environment. So what we found ourselves doing was scratching our heads going, gosh, how do we manage this? Because this is going to be kind of tough. We are now looking at opening up a new facility, and I'll get to that in a second, where we're looking to put a tablet in every single room. And we want to give a patient access to not only their patient information, but a lot of other things, access to the TV, room controls, and that sort of thing. Well, this really created a big challenge for us. And that was how do we turn these things around quickly? How do we clean these things? Um, how do we give them still access to the applications we want to give them access to? How do we empower them to even download some apps they may want to? Um, and so it was a big challenge for us. But we are getting ready to open up a new facility, so it's getting a bit exciting for us. And, and so we had some challenges, so I'll go into more of that in a uh, Well, you can imagine, by the way, so first of all, if you have a, 
Imagine how many hospital rooms a hospital has. And to have IT running around every single room setting these up. And, you know, we typically deal with employees or even students. You know, students last the whole school year. What's the tenure of your typical user? Like, how often are you flipping over? Well, yeah, that's it, it, <laughs> exactly right. It varies. So the situation we piloted it in is, again, not a case we had a tablet necessarily in every room. We gave patients an option. Uh -huh. But a turnaround, I mean, it can happen in a couple of days. But certainly every single day, you are gaining a new customer. Right, right. right. And um, when you go into a situation where you're leaving a tablet in a room, you literally have, in some cases, 15 minutes to turn that tablet around. Right, patient, that room gets cleaned, they can clean it in 15 minutes, and they're bringing a new patient in. Yeah. So hire an employee and lose that same employee every single day. Exactly right. And flip right. around that piece of equipment right. for the next one. And, and you that, have no idea who that employee is going to be, yeah. what they're going to yeah. be like, what language they speak, or anything. Could be 10 years old, could, could be right. 70 years old, and that's that right. device needs to work for them. And now you're opening up a new hospital. I understand the doors look to be opening up when? The doors will be opening up next month, actually. And th I have to say, thank goodness, when we, when we first started talking about this yeah, conference, yeah. Uh, a few months back, uh, Dean had said, hey, come on out and speak uh, at the conference. And we're like, okay, uh, our hospital was supposed to open up yesterday. <laughs> back then, I'm thinking, that's going to be kind of tough. It's going to be weird. I'll be a little nervous up on stage thinking about what's going on. So thank goodness, I guess, yeah. it's been delayed till next month. we got a little slideshow of your, why don't you take that green button to advance and just tell us about this hospital. All right, so uh, Jacobs Medical Center is a 245-bed facility that's opening up, as I mentioned, next month. Each room in this hospital is a private room. Uh, each room will have a 60-inch, I think roughly 60-inch uh, flat-screen TV, and we are placing a Apple TV behind every TV, <laughs> and we'll be putting a, an iPad tablet in every single room. As you can see here, the... Rooms have floor to ceiling. Uh, Everybody windows. wants to like now go fall go down and break right? their leg. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we're more than happy to welcome you. <laughs> if you're in San Diego, <laughs> I can recommend a good place to stay. <laughs> So we are, we are excited about this, yeah. right? And, and, and as mentioned earlier, this, this, this uh, presented some uh, unique challenges, obviously, for us, uh, and a few of which were the rapid turnaround. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't want to take anything away from the patient. Again, we were committed to putting a tablet in the room. Uh, when we were looking at uh, the less expensive tablets, as we started moving forward with this project, we realized it just wasn't going to be doable for us. Yeah. And I had turned to Eric, and I said, okay, Eric, <laughs> I need you to do something for me. We've got to figure out a way. And trust me, Eric was pushing and pushing and pushing me. <laughs> and I, I'm not going to lie, he had to twist my arm quite a bit. But I said, okay, if you can prove to me that we can guarantee privacy, that we can wipe these things and get these things turned around in a matter of 15 yeah. minutes and still give the patients, empower the patients with access to apps, whether, whether it's via self-service or something else. Mm -hmm. I said, then uh, let's do it, but show me that we can do this. So that was what I tasked Eric with, and now I'm going to let Eric explain how we uh, achieved this. And you, I should mention as well, without exhausting the IT staff, and as you've mentioned many times to me, without exhausting the health care staff, the nurses can't be taxed with doing this. They need to be providing care to the patient. You, and you're absolutely right. One of the biggest concerns we had was with the 245-bed facility, we're anticipating roughly 30 to 40 beds being turned around in any given day. So that's 30 or 40 tablets wow. are going to be reprovisioned every single day. And if we were to use the old model of having someone from device support come up and actually wipe that device, it just, it's a, it literally would be an FTE. Yeah. So there's an ROI certainly that we can realize with this process, and, and that was a big concern of ours. So thanks to Eric. Tell us about the process. Well, thanks, Mark. Thank you, Dean. So the process is actually pretty amazing, right? We are, got this gorgeous hospital. We have 245 beds and a tablet that's sitting in that room waiting for that patient to get admitted. Once that patient comes in, gets admitted in, uh, working with uh, nursing to get them set up, they turn on the tablet and it's sitting there at the welcome screen for them. They go through a couple of configuration steps such as picking what language they want to use and the device then utilizes Apple's device enrollment program. That connects it to the Jamf Pro servers that we have and the Jamf Pro servers take over the configuration of the tablet. From there, we do things such as uh, changing the home screen layout, pushing out the most critical apps first, 
changing the background and the lock screens uh, uh, backgrounds. A feature that we added because you called us and told us to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, once the key apps are there, then the rest of the uh, rest, what, the rest of the uh, apps deploy. So the first app I want to uh, keynote here is the uh, bedside tablet. This requires that the nurse open up their patient record and pull up a QR code. We just scan that with the tablet, and now that tablet is provisioned to that patient. The patient sets up a pin code separate from the tablet itself for their medical records. Then this gives them the ability to see their medical records, see what they're in for, and they can tap on any of the pieces on the iPad to go directly to our health library and read more uh, information and keep drilling down to learn more, however much they want. From here, we also have the ability to go in and see what's happening next on their schedule, so they know about when their next medications are going to be due, when their next labs are going to be due. Uh, they can actually see their lab results on the tablet. They can also see all sorts of other information as well. <laughs> <laughs> That was me doing my uh, Dean Hagar impression from two weeks ago. So of course the other app is the room controls, right? We want the patient also to have control of the room. So they can control the lights, they can control the blinds, they can go in and adjust the temperature of the room within a reasonable amount, right? And then they can also go in and use that uh, control tablet to control the TV and uh, use it as a remote control, right? <laughs> Excellent acting. You should come to jail. I mean, <laughs> so uh, we also, uh, on the tablet, we want to make sure that the, there's plenty of apps for that patient, right? We want to make sure that there are social apps so they can stay uh, in contact with friends and family, uh, binge watch their favorite shows on their existing Hulu app uh, accounts. And then the other key piece is when we have family and friends visiting the patient, Maybe they're bringing small children with them. So we wanted to make sure that we had apps to help entertain the children because maybe a hospital visit isn't their trip to Disneyland that they wanted to go on, right? So we wanted to make sure that those uh, children had something to be entertained by with as well. And since the patient app it has its own PIN code, there's no risk of their uh, patient data going to the children, right? But we want to make sure that that, and we've seen in, from, our, from our pilots that this has dr drastically increased the amount of time that families are able to stay with the patient and extends that stay and make that a much cleaner experience for the patients. It's phenomenal. And then when, of course, we, we saw as the patient comes on, automatically loaded, everything's there. It's always the same for every single patient coming on. They do have the self-service there as well if you wanted to put other apps in there. And then they check out that day, maybe, or later in the day, or what, ha what happens then? Right. So once, once we have a uh, discharge request through the EMR system, the tablet will then receive that request and be wiped automatically. So there's no need for an IT person at all to touch this device. Phenomenal. Just absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> So, so think about this. You've got this unbelievably beautiful hospital. Uh, you've got an iPad. And you can imagine being a patient. Uh, you're, you're, you're kind of sore, typically, all right? Uh, and so all the things you need to look for, and on one tablet, you have all your medical information. You have all of your room controls. You have all of your entertainment. And you reach to the so socially to the outside world. You have it connected to the TV in the room with the Apple TV. I have not found a single other hospital in the world that has taken this vision this far. Mark, I mean, are you, did you model this off of like anybody that has this type of installation or do you think this is paving a, a, a new way? Well, we do think we're paving a new way here. We did not model this off of anyone else that we're aware of, at least, that's doing this. What makes us a bit unique, there are other hospitals that have tablets and rooms. Um, we're familiar with the, those. Uh, there's a couple of things that we do that are unique. One is I think we are the only ones that are offering up the iPad in every single room. We're certainly the only one that's also offering up an Apple TV in the room. Uh, and with that, we're offering up the room controls, which is yeah. something that is, is unique as well. Uh, you know, again, our goal is all about the experience, certainly for the patient. The patient's dealing with an awful lot 
as they're staying at our hospital. And we wanted to make it as a comfortable stay as possible for them. And we feel that we've achieved this, or we're going to achieve this. Um, we'll report back next, Jane. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, but we do think that this is, uh, the, we will successfully get to a, a, a great experience for the patients with our iPads and our Apple TV rollout. It's a, I mean, can you imagine a day in the future? We know that now there's millions of iPads out there in schools, but can you imagine the day in the future where this is just standard equipment in every, every hospital room because it truly transforms the experience that a patient has. And I want to say something about this guy uh, sitting to the far right here, Eric. You know, a year ago you weren't at JNUT, right? Uh, you were all working, doing something. First time I met you uh, when we had our first beer together, uh, you were explaining, hey, I'm, I'm the data security guy and the Mac guy. And, and the notion that we'd be sitting here a year later because the vision started with you. Uh, you know, before- He would I, not shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. A hospital is launching around a vision that a guy just like all of you had a year ago. That is amazing uh, and certainly worth celebration. Uh, congratulations and thank you. Uh, uh, Thank you guys so much. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you.